Hi, and welcome back to Among Therapists, Practical Tips, a podcast by Psychotherapy Academy. I'm your host, Dr. Jessica Diaz. Today, we're diving into the 16th episode of our series, Act for Trauma, PTSD, and Beyond. This episode reviews and explains tools to enhance your therapeutic skills for working with the PTSD population. In this episode, we're exploring the use of exposure exercises within an acceptance-based approach to treating PTSD. Exposure therapy is a cornerstone of effective treatment for PTSD and anxiety disorders, incorporating both in vivo and imaginal techniques. However, the acceptance-based rationale for these exercises differs significantly from traditional approaches. We'll discuss how ACT-inspired exposure aims to increase psychological flexibility by changing the context in which traumatic memories and associated thoughts are experienced. Additionally, we'll explore how these methods encourage clients to engage in behaviors aligned with their values, even in the presence of distressing symptoms. Our faculty member today is Dr. Sonia Batten. She earned a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Georgia and a PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Nevada. Dr. Batten worked in the Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA, in the role of a deputy chief consultant for specialty mental health. And she was the first ever associate director for women's health research at Yale University. We're excited to announce that this extract is part of our new trauma training pathway, Proven ACT, DBT, and Prolonged Exposure Techniques. Embark on a journey to master trauma therapy through various evidence-based frameworks. This training program emphasizes practical knowledge, allowing you to transform these theories into actionable strategies for effective trauma treatment in complex scenarios. Enhance your trauma therapy skills now with our three-dimensional e-learning program and earn up to 30.25 CE credits. So, without further ado, here's Dr. Sonia Batten. The empirical evidence for the treatment of PTSD indicates that one of the most effective components of treatment for PTSD and other related anxiety disorders is exposure, whether in vivo or imaginal. The use of exposure therapy is in many ways consistent with an acceptance-based approach to treatment, and we will frequently use exposure exercises when working with traumatized clients. Many of the methods of exposure used in acceptance-based approaches are conducted exactly as they are in other cognitive behavioral treatment packages, such as imaginal exposure exercises in which the client is asked to write about a memory of a specific traumatic event, repeating the description of this memory over and over, and even listening repeatedly to recordings of verbal accounts of the traumatic events. However, the rationale used to describe exposure exercises from an acceptance standpoint differs significantly from the traditional rationale. Most importantly, we do not suggest that recounting the trauma multiple times will result in habituation or reduction of difficult private events, as this rationale highlights exposure as another method aimed at experiential control. Rather, we discuss the possibility that approaching instead of avoiding these traumatic memories and the associated thoughts and affect will change the content in which these private events are experienced and the nature of the relationship that the client has with these experiences. Consequently, this change in context then allows for more behavioral flexibility and increased ability to make steps forward in valued directions. Additionally, in vivo exposure is also conducted regularly as an integral part of acceptance-based therapy for PTSD, although the form of the exposure and the rationale may differ. For instance, a client may be encouraged to attend a party, which could be a previously avoided activity for that person, not with the purpose of habituating to anxiety in that situation, 
but with the explicit goal of engaging in a behavior that is consistent with the client's value of developing and maintaining relationships. You might also do interoceptive exposure for a trauma client who has panic type symptoms when they are triggered by trauma reminders, where the focus is on eliciting panicky feelings through traditional interoceptive triggers like spinning in a chair or hyperventilating, and then working on more flexible behaviors even in the presence of feelings of panic. Showing the person that they can do anything other than what they would normally do while having those sensations is progress. Could be reading a magazine article, carrying on an unrelated conversation with the therapist, or counting to 100 on their fingers. In the end, the goal of exposure is the same as the overall goal of ACT, to increase psychological flexibility. ACT-inspired exposure aims to broaden the individual's repertoire so that he can move forward in a variety of ways that may be more functional in any given situation than avoidance or freezing would be. In fact, for many individuals, each step forward can be seen as its own type of exposure exercise. And in a broad sense, all of ACT can be conceptualized as serving an exposure function as it works to undermine avoidance across a variety of situations and experiences, not just those that are related to the traumatic event. This is one of the reasons that after an individual's values have been clarified and identified, commitment exercises, both in session and out of session, are the central focus of much of therapy. Some small changes may be made when doing formal ACT exposure exercises as compared to traditional exposure. For example, the therapist may ask the client to rate SUDs, SUDs, subjective units of distress, throughout the exposure exercise. But it's not for the purpose of seeing if the distress goes down over time. Instead, the focus is on mindful awareness of those symptoms throughout the process. In addition, a more actified example of self-monitoring may be added to exposure, in which a person is asked to give repeated ratings of levels of willingness to experience whatever happens to be present, either on a scale of 0 to 10 or 0 to 100 or whatever works for the person. On a final note about application, exposure and ACT can be done either concurrently or sequentially. Exposure can be integrated throughout the course of treatment as long as values, willingness, and diffusion have been introduced. Or a therapist could go through a general introduction to ACT all the way through without much of a focus on the trauma per se, and then move to a more formal exposure portion of treatment afterward. There is no one right sequence. Again, this is one of those things that should be determined through the case conceptualization process, understanding the most pressing needs for that individual. So some key points. As with most effective treatments for PTSD and other anxiety disorders, ACT incorporates exposure exercises, but with a focus on increasing psychological flexibility and valued living rather than decreasing anxiety. In this ACT-based approach, individuals are shown that private experiences and bodily sensations can be approached with willingness rather than avoidance. Diffusion methods are used to change the characteristic response to troubling thoughts, and exposure practices in and out of session help the individual with moving forward with a valued life, whether or not post-traumatic symptoms are present. In ACT, exposure exercises can be any opportunity for an individual to practice approaching a situation or sensation that she characteristically attempts to avoid, control, or escape. Instead, practicing willingness and diffusion in the service of broadening her behavioral repertoire in the presence of the avoided stimulus. All right, so that was Dr. Sonia Batten on the use of exposure exercises in ACT for treating PTSD. To recap, we learned that ACT incorporates exposure exercises with a focus on increasing psychological flexibility 
and valued living rather than merely reducing anxiety. Exposure exercises help clients approach private experiences and bodily sensations with willingness instead of avoidance. We also discussed how diffusion methods are used to alter responses to troubling thoughts, enhancing clients' ability to move forward with a valued life. Remember, in ACT, any opportunity to practice approaching avoided situations or sensations can serve as an exposure exercise, fostering willingness and diffusion to broaden behavioral repertoire. So knowing the forefront trauma therapy skills isn't just about expanding your expertise. Imagine the feeling of confidence and fulfillment as you help one patient with trauma issues after the other get back on their feet and finally feel like themselves again. Our new trauma training pathway, proven ACT, DBT, and PE techniques will help you gain the confidence and skills to tackle even the most complex scenarios in the world of PTSD and trauma. With our three-dimensional approach, you will get a comprehensive training in acceptance and commitment therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, prolonged exposure, plus a bonus on trauma-informed stabilization treatment to enhance your therapeutic skills and upgrade your clinical practice. Enroll now and earn up to 30.25 CE credits on completion. If you're a psychologist, counselor, social worker, physician, or nursing professional, these credits are accepted by your professional board. You can click the link in the show notes to learn more about accreditation and the training. You can also access exclusive content which isn't covered in this podcast. This is an on-demand training and all modules are available in multiple formats. You can watch videos, listen to audio, and download PDF transcripts. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us spread the word by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts and sharing news of it on your social media. We are so grateful for your support. Thank you for listening. This was Dr. Jessica Diaz. See you soon for the next episode. Bye-bye.